Here we go. It's been five years since I paid off over $100,000 worth of consumer debt. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the exact strategy I use to get rid of that nasty debt that ultimately led me to financial freedom. What's up guys, real quick, if you haven't joined my free Facebook group, Residential Real Estate with Jaron Sustar yet, you need to scroll down to the show notes of this episode, click the link to the Facebook group, it's completely free, fantastic place to network and collaborate with other residential real estate investors all across the country so that you can continue to grow your real estate portfolio. sexy part of my story is I've bought rental properties for the last five years. I've done fix and flips, been able to build my net worth to multi-millions, make a lot of money per year off of real estate, but that's not my entire story. Before I was able to buy any of this real estate and have all the success and financial freedom that I experienced today, I had to go through the trenches of paying off debt. I came out of college with about $65,000 in student loan debt in 2013. Would I take anything back? No, I I would do it all over again. I had an absolute blast. I got to play division one baseball. I met my wife. I had the best four years of my life. So if I had to do it over again, I would do the same thing. And not to mention it helped me get a fantastic job later in my career that helped expedite my journey to financial freedom. But nonetheless, I came out with all of this debt. Well, also I'm from the middle of nowhere, South Carolina. And you just have to have a jacked up truck if you are from where I'm from. And so having that ingrained in me, as soon as I was able to, once I joined the working world in 2013, I think by 2014, I went and bought myself an F-150. I put a leveling kit with bigger tires on the F-150. And so now we're at, what, $65,000 worth of debt in student loans to another $25,000 in truck loans. So that puts us at, what, $90,000. Well, I had also bought my wife an engagement ring, did not have enough money to pay for it outright. So that's another $2,500. So I think we're at, what, $92,500. And then I ran credit card debt of at least 10,000. So that puts us at 102,500 bucks. And I guarantee you there was more because I think when I've done the math before, it all equaled up to 120,000 at some point. But we'll just stick with, for the sake of this video, the student loans, the ring, the truck, and the credit card. Because I wanna walk you guys through exactly how I went about paying off this debt. Because here's the deal, paying off debt is not fun. Paying off debt is grueling. It's the trenches. I equate it to you feel as though you're trudging through quicksand on this journey to financial freedom. But listen loud and clear, folks. It has to be done if you are ever going to flourish financially. Now, when I talk about debt, I'm not talking about mortgages on rental properties and real estate. That is what we categorize as good debt. But then there's bad debt, and this is what we call consumer debt. So the trucks, the engagement rings, student loans, which was good because it allowed me to get a good job and gave me the best four years of my life, but you can't collateralize that. So now it's high interest and we gotta get it taken care of. All the things I talked about, that is what we categorize as bad debt. And all it's gonna do is as you're trying to grow to financial freedom and build your wealth, it's just going to weigh you down. And so I think it's important for us to get rid of it. I really encourage people to get rid of the bad high interest debt before you start going all into investing. Now, there's an argument that one could pose that says, hey, if my truck loan is at a 2.9% interest rate and I can buy real estate and get a 15% return or the stock market and get an 8% return, Shouldn't I go ahead and invest and take the spread? There is an argument there, but it's not guaranteed that you are going to get an 8% return on the stock market in the short term. And it's not guaranteed you're going to get a 10, 12, 15, 25% return on real estate in the short term. But it is guaranteed that that payment for that truck is going to be due every month. And until you pay it off, it's going to keep calling. So there's an argument there. You guys understand what I'm saying? I took the route though, let's get all the bad decisions, all the bad debt out of the way, start with a clean slate, then we can build our wealth on a strong foundation. It's like the Bible story, we wanna build a strong foundation for us to build our wealth on so when the storms come, we don't have a house of cards. Think about people you know who are too over leveraged. They've got themselves in rough situations because they've made bad decisions and instead of cleaning up the bad decisions, they let them linger around while trying to make good decisions and then they're trying to make good decisions but these bad decisions are just lurking in the background and they eventually catch up with you. 
And so wisdom tells you to get rid of the bad debt. If you talk to any very wealthy person, they use good debt to grow their wealth and they stay away from bad debt. They don't chase credit card points. They don't go after rebates or cash back. They just buy the dang thing with the money that they have. They don't buy things that they don't need with money that they don't have. And that keeps them in a strong financial position where the rest of the world, the middle class and the lower class, they continuously buy things they don't need with money they don't have. What we're trying to do here is to get you out of the habit of doing that because you're never gonna be able to grow wealth unless you do it. So here's how I did it. I use what Dave Ramsey calls the snowball method. Now, I don't know if Dave Ramsey came up with it or somebody else, but when we were laden in debt and early in our marriage, we went to a church service in 2014 where Dave Ramsey spoke and didn't know who this guy was, some bald charismatic guy who had a very compelling message and then sold his $79 get out of debt course at the end. I think it's called Financial Peace University. We hopped into it and said, hey, we probably need this because we have a lot of debt and we don't want to be normal. We don't want to be the status quo. And so the way Dave Ramsey taught us to pay off our debt was smallest to largest. Now, somebody could argue, well, why wouldn't you pay off the one with the highest interest first? That's a great question, but there's an even better answer. The reason we don't start by paying off the one with the highest interest first is because what if the one with the highest interest is the largest debt? It's going to be hard for you to see any progress if you're paying on a $100,000 loan every month and you're not seeing that big of a dent or not getting any satisfaction from paying it off. When we use the debt snowball method and we start from largest to smallest, what we're doing is we're messing with our our psychology. So as you guys know, money is very emotion based. People think that it's just nuts and bolts and numbers. It's not. Most of the decisions that people make, they know logically what they should do, but emotionally, psychologically and emotionally, they can't control themselves and they do all these impulse buys and they get themselves in a bad financial position. So if we reverse this and say, okay, how can we give ourselves small little wins, give us that hit of dopamine, give us that impulse sensation that we need. We do it by paying off the small debts first because that gives us a little bit of a win. And when we get a win, we have momentum to then be able to compound it. So when we looked at our debts, they ranked in this order from smallest to largest. We had the engagement ring, we had the credit card, we had the truck, and then we had student loans. And so what we did is we focused first on the engagement ring. And then the others, the credit card, the truck, and the student loan, we paid the minimum payment every month and then socked every other dime we had to paint off that ring. I think the ring, like I mentioned earlier, was about $2,500. It's no secret that if you're gonna be successful in real estate investing, you have to be able to fund your deals. Whether you're doing the Burr method or whether you're fixing and flipping properties for a profit, you gotta be able to get to the closing table with money and you gotta have money to rehab the property. And so I personally use backflip capital when I need money to get to the closing table and to rehab my properties. I'm in the middle of a flip right now, and I partner with Backflip. It has been the smoothest process of all time. I literally went on their app, applied for the loan. You get pre-approved in less than 48 hours. You can lock in funding in just a few seconds with the touch of a button. Funding takes less than two weeks. Hello, that gives you an advantage when you're making offers on properties. And I can't say enough about partnering with Backflip Capital. They're great folks with a fantastic product that everybody listening to this should check out for the next time you go to do a bird deal or fix and flip property. So here's what I want you to do. Go down to the show notes of this show. I've put a link for Backflip Capital in those notes. All you have to do is click the link so that you can download their app and get your next deal funded with Backflip. Buy your first or next real estate deal in the next 90 days guaranteed or we'll continue coaching you until you do. That's my guarantee if you join my rental academy. I've stumbled upon a process that is so powerful that I can sit here today and say, you can come into my world and buy your first deal in the first 90 days. And if you don't, I'm gonna keep coaching you until you do. What we've done in the Rental Academy is we've removed all the roadblocks for you. I've already chosen the market for you. You're gonna have leads generated automatically. Myself and my team's gonna work with you to analyze those leads. When you pull the trigger on a property that you wanna buy and you need to fund it, we've got lenders in place. And after you've closed on it, if you need to rehab it, great. We've got contractors in place. And if you wanna keep it as a rental, we've got property managers in place. So you come into our world, we plug you into a proven system, make it easy for you so you can have success in your real estate investing journey. If you're interested, you can go to cowboysacademy.com or if you go down to the show notes of this episode, click the link that says Cowboys Rental Academy and it will take you to your next steps there. If you've been struggling finding good real estate deals, I've got a solution for you. It's REI Call Center. REI Call Center has professionally trained and managed cold callers to help you scale 
your real estate business. I think they give you somewhere around like 1,500 cold calls per day. Their clients have closed around $10 million from the leads they brought in. They got close to 200 clients going right now. And they're really more than just cold callers. Yes, they have their team of professionals who are making their calls, but they have weekly trainings and Q&A calls for yourself. They have training videos. They've got Slack channels with dedicated people to make sure you're successful. They've got checklists, cheat sheets, you name it. They've got you covered to make sure you are successful in your real estate journey. Well, how does it all work? Well, step one, you're going to pull a targeted list working with them from prop stream so that you can target the certain locations that you want to start buying properties in. Second, they're going to use their Zen call platform to start calling 1500 calls a day per cold caller. They're going to then upload all the leads into Asana. You have a view of them and you can go attack and start buying the properties that you see that pique your interest without having to do any other work. Look, I have worked a W-2 job while building my real estate portfolio. I've been raising a family the entire time. So I haven't had time to go and cold call myself. And that's where a company like REI Call Center comes into effect to be able to take that load off your plate so that you can generate leads, close more deals, and build that portfolio. We can reach out to them at reicallcenter.com or if you go to the show notes of this episode, you will see a link that will take you directly to it. And so we attacked it. We threw everything that we had at it until all the 2,500 had been paid and we owned that ring outright and didn't owe K's Jewelers or whoever it was any more money. Then this is where it starts to snowball. We take the money that we were throwing towards the ring, okay? So let's say we were allocating $100 a month to pay off that ring. So let's say the ring payment was $100 a month, but we were allocating $300 a month of our own money to pay it off. Well, now we can continue to roll that $300 a month of our own money that we have allocated to now pay off the credit card since we don't have to pay towards the ring anymore. But also that ring just freed up an additional $100 a month from that payment we were having to make on the ring as well. So we go from paying on $300 on the ring per month to pay it off to now we have $400 a month to pay off that credit card. Well, we're gonna pay that credit card debt off as fast as we can, and guess what? As soon as we pay it off, we're gonna take whatever its payment was and snowball it on top of the $400 a month. And so now, let's say we have $700 a month that we've just freed up that we can now throw to the truck that we own 25,000 on. And then once we snowball the truck, we've opened ourselves up another 300 additional bucks to go to our 700. So now we have $1,000 a month that we can pay to our student loans. And it all compounds on each other and allows you to pay off debt quicker. The debt snowball is unbelievably powerful because it picks up momentum. They, they call it a snowball because think of an avalanche. When the snowballs start coming down the hill, they get larger and they pick up speed. And that's what we're trying to do when we pay off our debt. It usually starts slow. It's not the funnest process. That's why we want that quick win. And then let's pick up momentum and let's start paying off these debts and let's snowball them. But in addition, how can you go make extra income to throw even more money on the debts that you have? I know for myself, I always had a side job. I, when I started at CentOS, I was delivering fruit. When I was doing pharmaceutical sales, I had a pressure washing business. At some point in my journey, I was taking pictures for Google. I've signed up for Uber. Whatever you have to do to make extra income to get this debt paid off faster, that is going to allow you to put yourself in a position to then start taking that big journey towards growing wealth. Because right now, before we can grow wealth, we've got to take care of our bad decisions. And then once those bad decisions are taken care of, then you're in a position to start investing in an asset like real estate, which we know is going to build wealth over time. We're not going to be able to do that until we take care of the debt that we got ourselves in in our previous quote unquote life. And let me tell you guys, it is totally worth it. It is totally worth it. It's not the funnest experience paying off debt. It is not glamorous. People are going to question you. People are going to try to entice you to go into more debt. I remember at points in our journey, people were telling me, oh, you need new furniture in your house. You need to upgrade your kitchen. Oh, Jaron, you need to go and get Mary Beth a new car. And these are all middle-class people who I consider broke. And if you've heard me talk at all, I always advise you guys, don't take money advice from broke people. And I don't care how close they are to you. I don't care if they're your family. I don't care if they're your best friend. If they're broke, do not take money advice from them. Take advice in other areas of life that's their strong suit. But there's a reason they're broke. 
It's because they continuously have a brand new car. They continuously are in debt for furniture. They're continuously running up their store card to get points. They're continuously maxing out their credit cards in the name of cash back, but they can't yet pay them off. And so misery wants company. And so they come to you as, what are you doing, bro? Your wife needs a better car. You need nicer furniture. You need nicer furniture. All your house needs an update. They hit you with all these things that to society is the norm. You start thinking, well, yeah, I kind of do deserve nicer furniture. Or yeah, you know, my wife with the kids, she probably does need a new car, even though this one only has 90,000 miles or 110 or 120,000 miles and it's running perfectly fine. You know what? I'll be a better husband and better father if I get my wife this car. No, you will not. That is absolute horse trash. You will not be a better husband. You will not be a better father. Whatever marital issues you had before that car, you're going to have a week after that car. Whatever daddy issues you caused before that car, you're going to have a week after that car. You're actually being selfish and you're trying to find some type of pleasure for yourself or instant pleasure for your family by making bad financial decisions that give you guys what you want now. That's selfish. And you do it in the name of love, but you're not doing it in love. If you look deep down, there's an ulterior motive. You want to make somebody feel good. When in reality, if you really loved, if you really wanted to be the man or woman of the house, if you really wanted to be the great husband or wife, if you really wanted to be the great father or mother, you would pay now, you would sacrifice now and say, listen, I know it would be amazing if I could buy you a brand new car. I would love to get brand new furniture in this house. Honey, I want a brand new kitchen too. I would love to be able to do it. But right now, if we make this financial decision today, if we play now, we're going to have to pay for this so much longer. I'm going to have to work an additional five to 10 years to pay this off. Our opportunity for financial freedom is going to get thrown out the window. I'm going to have to work extra to make money, which is going to make me a worse husband, is going to make me a worse father. Understand that I want these things for you, but that's why I'm going to make the decisions I am today. And we're going to stay away from these things. And instead, we're going to climb out of these bad decisions that we've made previously. We're not going to continue making them as a family unit. Hang with me in the very near future. Once we get the bad decisions taken care of and we have this discipline in place and we start building this financial freedom, you're going to be able to drive whatever car you want. You're going to be able to live in whatever house with whatever furniture and make your kitchen whatever you want it to look like. We just need to sacrifice for just a little bit because if not, we're going to be stuck in this rat race forever and I really don't want us to be there. And if you make those decisions now, fam, and you follow the method I just taught you to pay off this debt and start there and build that discipline, you will go from being middle class to you will become a one percenter and it'll happen a lot quicker than you think. And everybody else will call you weird. Everybody else will talk about how you don't buy nice stuff. Everybody else will talk about how you don't spend money on anything. But when you're 45 and you're traveling around the world or you're waking up every day and doing what you wanna do, and they still have another 20 years of work that they have to work because they have no assets or capital to their name to set them free before then, you'll look back and say, man, I am so glad I made the decisions I did today. And then the new challenges will come up. They'll talk about how you inherited money or how you got lucky or how you did people wrong and you'll face a whole new set of challenges. People aren't gonna stop talking forever. The quicker you learn that and the quicker you stay in your lane and do what's best for you and your family, the quicker you're going to have success and live the life of your dreams. So rant over. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. I hope it was helpful. Go implement the debt snowball. Get the bad high interest consumer debt out of your life so you can start investing and building wealth. If you haven't seen these other two videos yet, check them out. They're going to be super helpful for you. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, tell other people about this channel so we can help spread the good news on how to build financial freedom through real estate and making good money decisions. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time.